Hey everybody, this is Andrew from Little Leaf. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good morning, evening, afternoon, noon tea. Whatever it is you're doing, I hope it's good. And um, I just wanted to make this tips and tricks video for all of the spreadsheets that we make and uh, just for general spreadsheet use. Um, I understand that there are things that I know off the top of my head that aren't common knowledge to people who don't work with spreadsheets all the time. So I just wanted to uh, clear up some stuff so that people understand the basics of a few things that make the spreadsheet work properly because they've been coming up recently. And I figured this video is long overdue. I will also be showing how to do macros and then assign them to the buttons in the spreadsheet for the clear yields and the clear data buttons. So when you get your spreadsheet, one thing that you always want to be looking for is that you only have data in blocks that need data. So that's the first point. So you've got all of these checked off. So you need to have yields for all of these. If you don't have a yield for something, don't check the box. You also have your varieties. If you don't have a variety, don't have the box checked. Because if you do have the box checked, it's trying to assign a value to it down here and it can't. And that can jam up a whole bunch of other calculations. So make sure you only have data where it should be and don't have data where it shouldn't be. So also, if you have this, don't have a value there for something that you haven't checked the box for. So if your spreadsheet's having problems, that's also another um, tip is check to see if you have something where it shouldn't be or don't have a box checked like it should be or don't have a value in the yield. So those are the, the first two basic things. Another thing is there are times when you add a new crop. So if you add a um, crop down here, say you add... Um, I don't know, I put abracadabra in there because it's funny. I just needed a word that's the first thing that came to the top of my head. Um, let's say you're going to add uh, cantaloupe. So, how do you spell cantaloupe, guys? I need help here. Cantaloupe? Cantaloupe? That looks right. All right, so you're going to add cantaloupe. You got abracadabra in there. Um, you always need a small size. The spreadsheet looks to see if there's a small size here. It doesn't look to see if there's anything here. It looks to see if there's a small size here. There's a reason for that. It's a little complicated. But anyway, if you don't have a small size selected, it will not calculate anything. Your spreadsheet will not calculate anything for that particular crop. And it'll also throw um, other stuff off, especially if it's used in a mixer or a blend. So always make sure you have a small size. Even if you're only ever going to fill out the small size, fill out a small size, okay? Um, you don't have to do any other size, but you have to fill out a small size, okay? Um, so you've got your cantaloupe, you go over here, you check off cantaloupe, you've got all of your values in here, and everything's good, none of the boxes are checked that shouldn't be checked. You go to the planning page, you don't have any data in these cells, everything's good to go. Alright, so you pack five arugula, okay, that looks good. You're going to pack, um... 50 holly basils, and you're going to pack uh, 10 of those. Uh-oh, look at that. It didn't take off the 10 from the 17 here. Well, why is that happening? It's not doing any math there. So, the reason that this is happening is because the function that causes this to auto-populate, based on the information here, needs to have these in alphabetical order. They are alphanumeric order, which is the same thing, essentially. Um, so you need to just go click this button here and then sort A through Z. As soon as you do that, it also sorts all of these cells. So you don't have to worry about this stuff. As long as you use this to sort, it sorts everything. As you can see, it sorts everything. So sorts A through Z, good to go. You go back over to the checklist page. If you didn't do it before, your yields will not sort over here, so you'll just need to put in your new yields. Make sure all your boxes are checked. And then when you come into here, it will properly calculate out 
everything. So take 10 off of that, you got 24, 30, there's <clears throat> 38 um, broccoli, you know, 10, boom, everything's working just fine. That's, that's a simple solution to that. If you're finding that these things aren't calculating correctly based on these values, it's because probably these aren't sorted alphanumerically. Um, and it's the same with the mix and blend data. It has to be sorted alphanumerically. So just when you add a new blend, you rename a blend, mix, whatever, you need to just make sure you click on that button, click sort A to Z, and it's good to go. You don't have to do anything past that. These do not need to be sorted alphanumerically, anything like that. Just the values in the column where the names are, okay? Um, so that, that handles that. Uh, for those of you using the uh, Imperial spreadsheet, this is where you fill out your, your cheat sheet. So for common sizes, uh, since the spreadsheet works in grams, because grams are just better form of measurement than ounces and pounds, you put whatever you're going to do. So we do quarter ounce, half ounce, one ounce. Um, we do two ounce, four ounce, eight ounce, one pound, and five pound measurements. Um, 1.5 is in there just, I don't know, I assume some people might do 1.5. So with all that being said, you put the ounce size here and then you put the amount of grams it is here and then when you go to your um crop data page it fills in this little cheat sheet here for you automatically um you could just fill it in right here you don't have to i i just put it on this reference page also you can add in whatever you want to call your mixes blends and varieties for when you fill in the mix and blend data um it's not super important for, you know, mom and pop places, but if you end up hiring people, they need to know if it's a mix or like a variety pack. Um, mixes and blends are pretty much the same thing. It's really a name and convention, but variety packs are different for us. We have variety packs that are separated into four. Um, it's a container that has four compartments in it for four different varieties in it. So um, an employee would need to know that they're packaging a variety and not a mix because the mix everything's just thrown together in one package, one container. Uh, so there's that stuff. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to go over is I think this, if you want to see your packaging in ounces, you can click here on the packing page um, or you can click grams. Uh, we do everything in grams. Um, we just do our packaging, you know, we, we, when we're packaging it up, we measure it in grams rather than ounces, just because it's more accurate. It's easier to see on the scale when you're doing it. Um, yeah, so you can, you can pick either or depending on your preference. Um, double checking your sizes. I don't know why I wrote that down on my list. Um, I guess just make sure you know what your sizes are. Um, I don't have a thing on this page that shows you what your small size is for each variety. Um, you should pretty much know that, I guess. Um, I thought about making an indicator to say whether it's an herb or um, a vegetable, because that seems to be the differentiator. All the herbs are super light, so you sell them in smaller quantities, and all of the vegetables are in bigger, they're, they grow heavier, so you sell them in heavier quantities, you know, you get greater yield. Um, and they're not as potent in flavor, too herbs are super potent flavor so um other than that um if you have any problems with your spreadsheet like i said always double check your numbers um always double check that there's no data where there isn't supposed to be data so if you have something here um the packing spreadsheet can sometimes show a blank value here and that's just gonna throw you off um but yeah, so with all that being said, I'm going to show you how to record a macro. And, um, sorry, I just threw my phone down. Um, once you record the macro, you can assign it to these buttons and just make your life easier um, when you go to start a new uh, packing. <clears throat> all right, so what you want to do is you want to go to Tools, and you want to go to Macros. Make sure you're already on this page. And you go to Record Macro. And once you start recording the macro, everything you do within the spreadsheet is recorded. You can record anything. Anything that you do commonly, like repetitively, you can record as a macro and assign a, um, 
hotkey to it or um, a cell that you click or a button like I have on here. So for the clear yields, all you do is you select cell D6, scroll all the way down to cell D31, and then highlight them all and hit delete. And you see it just said here, um, delete values. And that's it. So now you click save. It asks you for a name. I call it clear yields because it matches the name of the button. No spaces, clear yields, and hit save. And it's going to go and save, save, done. So now when you go to the button, you click assign script and you type in clear yields. And again, that's why I name it clear yields because it's just easier to remember because it matches the name of the button. So now you have the macro assigned to the button. So let's fill in some stuff here. Okay, so now we've got our yields punched in. We come up, it's a new day, we're harvesting some new stuff. We only check the boxes for whatever it is we're going to be harvesting and packaging. And then we click clear yields. It's going to ask you for permission. Click continue. It's going to ask you to sign into your account. Click continue. All right, so then you're going to click down here, go to recorded macros, copy of macro. It's Google's silly. It's their own program, and they try to keep you from going to it. Click allow on this next page here. It's all within Google. If you get a security warning, it's silly. Literally, Google owns the macro thing. It's so just you're safe. So once you've done that, you got to click it again, and boom, it went through. It deleted all your yields from the previous harvest, so you don't have to go through and manually do it, and you aren't going to accidentally delete something you're not supposed to delete. All right. So then on the planning page. This one's a little more complicated. So you have to have your, oh, sorry guys. That's a poor formatting right there. So you have to have every cell open that you record stuff in. <clears throat> and you're gonna go again to tools, macros, record macro. And from here, you're going to select this cell all the way down to this cell and then hit the delete button. You can hit backspace too, same thing. Then you're gonna select this cell all the way down to this cell. And then you're going to hit delete. It records that second action. Then you're gonna grab this cell and just drag all the way down and hit delete. Okay? And then you're gonna go this cell all the way down to this cell and you're gonna hit delete. And you're going to hit this cell. And oh, again. And do it again. Do it again. Make sure you're not grabbing wrong cells. Delete. Delete. So once you've done that, you're going to click. Oh, see? I did. A, I did. A, anyway. So. <clears throat> No, I guess I did do that right. Oh, I deleted everything. Okay, so you just want to make sure that every you're only selecting the boxes that are in red. Okay, those those cells. Like I accidentally just hit those and it did something funky. So once you've done that, once you've recorded that macro, you would save it, call it clear data, and then you would right click the button, click on this little three button three dot button thing, assign script, type in clear data, and then it would be assigned to that. It will probably tell you you need to do permission again when you click on it the first time. Just do that and then you should be good to go. Um, always test out your macros after you first do them and make sure they work because um, if you don't and you're in the middle of trying to package up, you know, a, 20 pounds of microgreens and something goes wrong, um, it's just going to it's just going to drive you nuts. Uh, so with all of that said, I think those are all the tips and tricks that I can think of that have come across uh, since we started selling these spreadsheets. I hope this was helpful. Um, a free way to support our channel is to like our video, make a comment, please leave comments, questions, criticism. I'm tough. I can take all the criticism you can throw at me. 
and subscribe and share this on social media, share this on Facebook, Microgreens groups. We really appreciate the support. Um, and if you've bought this spreadsheet and you like it, leave a review. If you don't like it, leave a review. Um, yeah, just that's all. And a free piece of advice, if you haven't already, invest in cryptocurrency, guys. Bitcoin for the win. All right, thanks. Have a good night.